They told you cars were safe, reliable, worth every euro, but they didn't tell you about the breakdowns, the fire risks, or the systems that literally fight the driver for control. These 10 cars were sold across Europe as the future. Instead, they became expensive disasters. Let's expose what they don't want you to know. At number 10, the MG4 Electric was meant to be a people's car. Cheap, clean, and practical. But it's quickly turning into a rolling headache. In 2024, what car surveyed nearly 30,000 owners across the UK? Out of every brand, MG scored dead last. The MG4's reliability rating? Just 63.8%, the worst of any electric car on the market. It's not just seen a few random issues. Owners are facing everything from strange software bugs to serious electrical breakdowns. And when something goes wrong, the wait for repairs can feel endless. But the most frightening problem? The MG4's Lane Keeping Assist. Testers from Witch Magazine found the system didn't just wobble or drift, it yanked the car into the wrong lane. One MG actually tried to steer into oncoming traffic during a rural test drive. Others had similar stories. The steering would suddenly fight the driver, pulling towards a ditch or the opposite lane. Some drivers were so shaken they returned the car completely. MG rolled out software updates, but a glitch that can take control of your steering? That's more than a simple coding error. That's dangerous engineering. It doesn't stop there. Some MG4s were recalled because they could deadlock themselves while still running. Imagine stepping out your car and it locks you out while the motor's still on. Inside the cabin, build quality also disappoints. The trim rattles, the paint looks rushed, and the materials remind you this is a low-cost EV. Electric cars are supposed to be simpler than petrol models. Fewer moving parts, lower maintenance. But with the MG4, the electronics are a constant source of trouble. Yes, the price is attractive, the range is decent. But be prepared, the real cost might come later on. In time, stress, and repair bills. Next up at number 9, the BMW M3 is a legend. Quick, sharp, and aggressive. But the 2015 to 2018 F80 generation has been giving owners more anxiety than adrenaline. According to WarrantyWise, the version of the M3 scored just 24 out of 100 for reliability. That makes it the third least reliable car on the list. The heart of the M3's problem is the 3-liter twin-turbo engine, the S55. It's a powerful engine, but it's also fragile. Turbochargers can fail, timing components can slip, the crank hub issue, a well-known flaw, has led to full engine rebuilds in some cases. That's a massive risk for a car that once cost over £60,000. Drivers complain about sudden misfires, warning lights and that dreaded limp mode where the engine loses power. Others report strange noises under full throttle. Turbo problems are especially common, and repairs aren't cheap. Warranty claims showed many fixes costing around £2,500. But some owners weren't so lucky. A gearbox failure on one M3 came with a £12,000 repair estimate. And this isn't a supercar, it's a performance saloon. A car many people daily drive. But the cost of keeping it running smoothly can hit supercar levels. Track use only makes things worse. The drivetrain takes a beating. Manual gearboxes wear out quickly, and the DCT automatics, while fast, have their own set of issues jerky shifts, transmission faults, warning lights. Then there's the electronics. The adaptive suspension and differential system can throw error codes out of nowhere. The iDrive screen might freeze or crash. Even though the interiors feel solid, the car is packed with complicated systems, and each one is another thing that can fail. This version of the M3 is undeniably thrilling, but it's also high maintenance. Without a warranty or a very generous budget, it might not be worth the risk. Regular oil changes, turbo inspections, and even preemptive repairs like crank hub upgrades are a must. The F80 M3 was meant to be the ultimate driving machine. For some, it is. But for others, it's the ultimate repair bill. At number 8, we have the Maserati Levante. It was an Italian SUV with sleek curves, a roaring engine, and luxury stitched into every inch. But behind that glamorous look is a car that's driven more people to frustration than excitement. Since its launch in 2016, the Levante has been a magnet for mechanical trouble. In the UK, Warranty Wise gave it just 25.3 out of 100 for reliability. That puts it among the five worst rated vehicles on their list. And it's not just one issue. The Levante seems cursed with problems from every corner. Let's start under the bonnet. The engines, a Ferrari-based twin-turbo V6 and a VM Motori V6 diesel, sound thrilling and offer strong performance, but too often owners report issues with the fuel system and engine sensors. The dreaded check engine light is a common sight, and when it flashes, the car can drop into limp mode. On top of that, early diesel versions had serious timing chain tensioner problems, triggering official recalls in some countries. Some owners have even faced turbocharger failures. The gearbox, an 8-speed automatic, is smooth most of the time, but electronic glitches have caused shifting problems for some. 
These often require software updates or even replacement modules. And then there's the electronics. The Levante's weakest point by far. Faulty sensors cause warning messages to pop up for all sorts of systems. Suspension, alarms, you name it. If the car has air suspension, it might get stuck at the wrong ride height. Sometimes it even leans to one side. Infotainment issues add to this mess. The Uconnect system inside the Levante has a tendency to freeze or reboot randomly. Bluetooth works one day and vanishes the next. For a car this expensive, that's completely unacceptable. Even the cabin can let you down. Creaks and rattles appear in some cars. Trim pieces fall off. Door seals don't always do their job, letting in water and soaking the carpets. It's the kind of build quality you'd expect from a car half the price, not a high-end Italian SUV. And then there's the repair bill. According to WarrantyWise, the average claim cost is close to £3,000. That's not for major engine swaps, that's just the average. Because nothing is catastrophically bad, but everything seems to go wrong at some point. Combine that with a limited dealer network in Europe, and you're in for a long wait on parts, usually from Italy. If you're tempted by a used Levante, be careful, check the history, make sure every recall has been sorted, and don't even think about it without an aftermarket warranty. It's beautiful, yes, and it sounds glorious, but owning one might feel more like a punishment than pleasure. Next up is the Tesla Model S at number 7. When it was launched, it changed everything. Suddenly, electric cars were fast, stylish, and even luxurious, but it also brought a long list of flaws that Tesla engines are still trying to solve today. Between 2013 and 2018, early Model S owners were part of a quiet experiment, and many of them paid the price. In the same UK warranty-wise reliability index, the Model S scored just 25.9 out of 100. That's pretty terrible for a car that was supposed to be the future. The biggest issue? The drive unit. That's the electric motor assembly and the battery. Some owners had to replace the drive unit not once, but twice under warranty. Strange noises or full-on failure weren't rare. Later versions got better, but outside the warranty window, it's a risky gamble. Then there's the battery. In theory, it should last the life of the car, but in the real world, some batteries have failed. One British owner had to fork out over £10,000 for a replacement after the eight-year warranty ran out. That's enough to buy a whole second-hand car. And the electronics? They're a nightmare. The massive 17-inch touchscreen is the brain of the Model S, but it's prone to dying. That's because of a known issue with the embedded memory chip. Over time, the screen can go black or freeze, sometimes disabling things like the reversing camera or defogger. Tesla eventually recalled some of the cars to fix it, but not all. Autopilot has been another headache. The sensors have changed over time. Some drivers get random alerts saying the system needs service. And just when you get used to one software version, an update arrives, sometimes with bugs that break more than they fix. Some drivers report sudden screen reboots or problems with the climate system after updates. And even the basics let you down. Door handles break. The fancy motorized ones that pop out? They often stop working and get stuck inside the door. Sunroof seals leak. Suspension parts wear out too fast, especially on dual motor versions. In countries like Norway and China, Tesla had to quietly fix a lot of these under unofficial service campaigns. All this on a car that costs as much as a Mercedes S-Class. If you're eyeing a used Model S, tread carefully. Make sure the touchscreen issue has been sorted. Ask if the drive unit or suspension has been replaced. Tesla can fix a lot of things over the air, but not everything. And when the physical parts fail, the repair costs can be brutal. At number six, we've got the Vauxhall Corsa the F generation model that's been around since 2019. On the surface, it looks like a solid everyday car. It's compact, affordable, and a common sight across Europe. But behind the wheel, many owners are discovering it's far from reliable. In fact, for 2025, the Corsa keeps showing up on the most unreliable car lists according to Honest John and What Car. So what's going wrong? Well, quite a bit, actually. A lot of drivers report strange electrical problems. The infotainment system glitches out. Warning lights come on with no reason. Sensors fail even when nothing is wrong. These aren't just bugs. They point to deeper issues with wiring and how the parts are built together. Some even said water leaks got into the electrics, which made things even worse. Then there's the manual gearbox. Owners say it rattles, and mechanics often trace it back to poor oil servicing or skip changes. But that's not all. The engine itself has known faults, especially with the timing chain and tensioner. When those go bad, the engine starts rattling and loses power. That kind of noise isn't just annoying, it's a sign something big is wrong inside the engine. And the problems don't stop there. The steering rack had to be recalled. That's a big deal because it affects how the car handles on the road. Some drivers said it felt loose or unsteady. Not exactly what you want from your daily driver. Even the inside of the car has its share of letdowns. Dashboards that creak, trim pieces that come off too easily, windows that refuse to roll up. It all adds up to a car that feels cheaper and more fragile than it should. 
Now at number 5, let's talk about the second generation Nissan Juke, launched in 2019 and still on the market today. At first glance, it's a stylish little crossover, unique looks, easy to park, popular with city drivers. But under the skin, it's loaded with problems. In fact, what car called it the most unreliable car of 2024 across all categories? It's got just 50% in reliability ratings. That means every second owner had something go wrong. Now, the first generation Juke wasn't great either. These earlier models had a bad habit of CVT gearbox failures. Nissan tried to fix that in the 2019 redesign with a new engine and a different gearbox, but new problems showed up almost immediately. Let's start with the engine. The 1 litre turbo sounds efficient on paper, but owners report serious issues, timing chains wearing out too fast. Some even had full engine failures, and that's not unheard of for Nissan. Their 1.2 litre turbo engine in earlier models had the same problem chain stretching before 80,000 kilometers, and it looks like the same risk could be there with the new engine too. The turbo system has another weak point. If you don't change the oil regularly, sludge builds up. That blocks the oil feed line to the turbo, starving it. When that happens, the turbo can seize. Not exactly what you expect from a car that's only a few years old. Now let's talk about transmissions. The new Juke uses a dual clutch gearbox, or DCT. It's supposed to offer quick shifts, but in reality, it can be jerky. Some drivers say it overheats in traffic, others say it throws up random error codes, and earlier Jukes with the CVT had even worse problems, bearings failing, cars stalling under acceleration, and repairs costing a fortune. Honest John documented 32 CVT failures just on the Juke. That's not a small number. And it gets even more frustrating. The DCT gearbox also has software issues. Owners complain the car randomly loses drive or shifts harshly. Often the fix is a software update, but some people have to go back to the dealer more than once to get it sorted. Electronics are another sore point. Parking sensors stop working, reversing cameras glitch out, batteries fail early, and the cabin? It feels rushed. Plastic trims rattle, buttons stick, it doesn't feel like it's built to last. But here's where it gets serious. Recalls. Lots of them. Between 2020 and 2021, Nissan issued recalls for fuel pressure sensors, airbag faults, even a start-stop button that could jam and stop the car from starting. One recall warned about a loose fuel pipe that might spray petrol under pressure. That's not just inconvenience, that's a fire risk. In Germany, ADAC breakdown statistics show the Juke is near the top for callouts, mostly for battery and engine faults. That's a clear sign something's wrong at the design level not just with bad luck. And number four is the Peugeot 3008, specifically the generation sold from 2017 to 2024. At first glance, it seemed like a good buy, sharp styling, a nice interior and a price that made sense. But beneath the surface was a series of catastrophic issues. In 2025, it ranked among the bottom 10% of all C-segment SUVs for reliability, according to Consumer Reports. On average, owners visited the dealership 2.7 times per year. That's not normal. One major warning sign came in March 2024 when Peugeot recalled thousands of units across the EU due to faulty front suspension ball joint mounts. These could fail suddenly, causing total steering loss. Even after the recall fix, 18% of German owners reported the same suspension noises again within six months. The diesel models weren't safe either. Add blue injection systems failed frequently. The repair? Around 4,200 euros. But the petrol versions were even worse. About 63% of 3008s sold in Europe used the 1.2 litre PureTech petrol engine. That engine was known for timing chain failures, sometimes as early as 48,000 kilometers. A full rebuild could cost 3,800 euros, and that's if the engine didn't fail completely. Even the structure of the car was flawed. Some 2024 models showed subframe corrosion in less than a year. That led to another EU-wide recall. With so many problems piling up, the resale value tanked. In the UK, a three-year-old 3008 now holds just 41% of its original value. For comparison, the Toyota CHR retains 58%. In short, the Peugeot 3008 promised a lot but delivered chaos. It might have looked like a smart buy, but owners quickly learned that it wasn't. Next is the Land Rover Discovery number 3. The Discovery 4 and 5 from 2009 onwards was supposed to be rugged, reliable, and perfect for families. In reality, they ranked among the least dependable vehicles in Europe. Warranty Wise gave them a shockingly low reliability score of 22.1 out of 100. Repair bills averaged over £2,000. In some cases, they went past 25,000. The problem started with the Discovery 4. The 3 litre TDV6 engine had a nasty habit crankshaft failure. It would snap in half or spin a bearing without warning. 
The result? A dead engine and a bill over £10,000. There was no official recall, just a lot of frustrated owners and mechanics replacing entire power units. That model also struggled with air suspension breakdowns, worn steering parts and electronic parking brakes that got stuck. Then came the Discovery 5. It brought new engines, new tech, and new headaches. Infotainment screens froze, driver assist features glitched out, the AdBlue sensors failed, disabling the car. And yes, timing chain and coolant issues popped up on early 2.0-litre engines. Even the newer 3.0-litre versions weren't immune. In 2023, Land Rover had to recall over 2,100 SUVs, including the Discovery, because the plastic oil filter housing could crack and spill oil on hot exhausts, a serious fire risk. The Discovery had loads of sensors, cameras, and modules, but once they started to age, things broke down fast. Sensors failed, suspension lines leaked, even things like seat motors and door locks gave up early. As a result, these SUVs became nightmares to maintain after warranty expired. If you owned one, you needed a strong stomach and a strong bank account. Moving on to number two, we have the Range Rover Sport. In warranty-wise index, it scored just 34.6 out of 100. Some insurers even reported 289 claims per 10,000 policies. That's one claim for roughly every 35 cars. A lot of these issues were mechanical. The three-liter diesel engine was notorious for crankshaft failures. That's not just an inconvenience, it usually means the engine is toast. Petrol models had their own problems too. Timing chain tensioners, supercharger belts, injection faults, the list went on. Even the older diesels, like the 2.7 TDV6, suffered from turbocharged failures. And then there was the transmission. The 8-speed auto was usually solid, but it wasn't perfect. Gearbox errors, transfer case faults, worn-out driveshaft spleens, all were common complaints. That's before we even get to the air suspension, which regularly failed and cost around £1,000 to fix. Many owners were met with suspension fault messages, a bouncing ride and an empty wallet. The electronics were a nightmare too. Key fobs failed, tailgates got stuck, alarm systems went off in the middle of the night. Some owners couldn't even start the car due to water-damaged connectors. Others saw the backup camera vanish or the digital dashboard freeze. Even the brand new 2022 models weren't safe, with software bugs and oil housing recalls making the rounds. Finally, at number one, we have the BMW i8. It looked futuristic. It had those flashy butterfly doors, a sleek body, and the promise of hybrid performance. But the BMW i8 ended up being the worst engineered car of 2025. On paper, it was brilliant. A small 1.5-litre turbo engine in the back, an electric motor in the front, and a high-volted battery tying it all together. But in reality, it was a disaster waiting to happen. The i8 scored just 16.5 out of 100 on the warranty-wise reliability index, the lowest score they'd ever recorded. And that wasn't a fluke. The hybrid powertrain was extremely complex. That meant twice as many components, twice the chances for things to go wrong. And they did. The high-voltage battery often failed too early. Replacement costs reached into five figures. Even the simple 12-volt battery could leave the car totally immobilized if it died. That's right, a dead small battery could brick the whole vehicle. The petrol engine, borrowed from Mini and pushed to deliver 231 horsepower, wasn't much better. Some owners experienced head gasket failures. Others reported complete engine breakdowns. Add in turbo issues, overheating, jerky acceleration between petrol and electric modes, and the story got worse with every kilometer. And it didn't stop there. The i8 had two separate gearboxes, one for the engine and one for the motor. If they didn't talk properly to each other, you'd get drivetrain warnings or lose power completely. Repairs often ran above £7,000. And then there were the electrical bugs. The door latches sometimes failed. The infotainment screens froze. Even the headlights, especially the fancy laser units, suffered from moisture ingress. Owners spent thousands fixing things that shouldn't break on a car this expensive. By 2025, it was clear. The BMW was all flash. No reliability. A bold experiment that punished its buyers.